Do we have a single bloody phone around here that doesn't have a notch in it? Xiaomi Mi Mix 3. All screen. Nice. No notch. Sweet. Snapdragon 855 processor? Oh. Nope. Looks like they're reserving that for the 5G model. But it's got a slide. It's so satisfying. What an innovative idea having the phone slide like that. Why didn't anybody ever make a slider phone before? Feels good. Smart Deploy allows IT departments to re-image unlimited computer models from one golden image. Search their library and grab your exclusive free licenses worth over $600 at smartdeploy.com slash Linus. The Mi Mix 3 is Xiaomi's newest flagship, and it is readily apparent as soon as you open the box. We even get this note from Xiaomi CEO Li Zhen. On the road of exploration, we will constantly invest, constantly strive, and constantly break through. We are willing to devote an additional 100%, even if we only improve by 1%. Be friends with our users. Be the coolest company in the hearts of our users. Yeah, I'm sure it flows a lot better in Chinese. Next, we've got the phone itself. And then finally, in the last compartment of the box, you get a shockingly complete accessory package. The headphone dongle kind of sucks, it's a little thin, and the case is unexceptional at best, but they included a 10 watt wireless charger. It's like a $50 value. Now, onto the phone. This thing is pretty. It's got smooth curves, a rear that's surprisingly easy to hold onto, and a thicker profile that tickles me in exactly the right. Sorry, what was I talking about? Right, phone, <laughs> sorry. So, one thing you'd expect in a device that eschews the modern thin is in design trend is a bigger battery. But the Mix 3 actually loses 200 milliamp hours of rated capacity over its predecessor. On the right edge, we've got our volume buttons and a lock button. And then on the left, we've got an AI button that can be set up to launch pretty much anything you want through a combination of single press, double press, and long press activations. I'm gonna let that sink in for a moment. Samsung, are you guys listening? That's how simple it is to make proper use of an extra button. So the thickness actually makes room for the slide, but we're gonna get into that later. First, let's talk about the screen. It's a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio, 1080p AMOLED panel that gives the Mix 3 a staggering 93.4% screen to body ratio. That means that it is unmatched by all but the Oppo Find X, which also used a sliding mechanism for its selfie cam. The difference here is that unlike the motorized Find X, the Mix 3 is all manual. But in actually a good way, it feels a lot like those old slide phones with the built-in keyboards, and it's both satisfying in the hand and solid, with no wobble or anything like that to feel concerned about. Now, I was worried about the motorized design on the Find X, so honestly, I'm actually happy to see this more pragmatic approach show up, even if it doesn't quite have the sex appeal. So the way it works is it gives you this visual cue when you slide it by pulsing along the screen edges and it'll emit a configurable audio tone, just in case you need your phone to sound like you've unsheathed a sword when you're taking a selfie for some reason. What's cool is that it isn't all for show. So you can actually turn the slide into a gesture that performs an action of your choosing. Samsung, are you guys taking notes on this? Though this approach does have its flaws. So if you like using your phone for more than one thing, like say for example, taking selfies and also engaging in video calls, chances are that you'll find auto-launching an app as annoying as it is helpful. And it would be nice to have a blacklist of apps where when they're open, it doesn't just take over what you're doing. 
Now on the plus side, if you choose the take a selfie option, which is what I've got going on here, it will even work without unlocking your phone. Pretty nice. Speaking of which, the Mix 3 does have face unlock, but unlike the Find X and the iPhone 10 for that matter, the whole experience does feel a little less magical and seamless because you have to manually slide the phone in order to expose the sensors. The good news is that unlike the iPhone 10, <laughs> Xiaomi didn't feel the need to remove the rear fingerprint sensor. So if you prefer that way, well then you've got good old fashioned fingerprint sensing that is virtually instantaneous and pretty darn accurate. So much so that it's actually possible to accidentally unlock the phone just by brushing against it in your pocket. And that level of responsiveness is system-wide, even though the writing is on the wall for the Snapdragon 845 SoC that our Mix 3 is equipped with. Now on our six gig model, everything is butter smooth and even opening apps from a cold start is quick and painless and it can only get better from there. If you spring for the top end model, you get a whopping 10 gigabytes of RAM to make sure that there's always some memory available for task switching. Though that's most of the nice stuff that I can say about the software experience. It's no secret that MIUI is not my favorite Android skin, but its latest iteration did at least get a couple of things right. The system theme is consistent feeling and looks reasonably pleasing, and Xiaomi apparently didn't get the memo that Android Pie dropped the quick access to system-wide audio sliders, which is just fine by me. And actually, while we're at it, the camera app is pretty competent too. There's plenty of manual shooting options here to control things like exposure, ISO, and white balance, along with a number of shooting modes. You got your night mode, your 960 FPS slow-mo, and a bunch of what Xiaomi calls AI modes, AI portrait, AI beautify, AI studio lighting, AI scene detection, and AI background music? That's a weird one. The cameras themselves are arranged in a two front, two rear configuration with the primary front camera using the new Sony IMX576 sensor that's set up to make use of super pixels, essentially simulating a larger physical sensor with its massive resolution to reduce the incidence of noise and improve low light performance. As for our testing, well, it, I don't know, sort of worked? It's a little weird. So our low light photos weren't especially noisy, but there was definitely a lot of smoothing going on. More than you might expect, even on an Asian phone that's got all the beauty enhancement that you would expect from it. As for the rear shooter, well, it's kind of the usual Xiaomi experience. If you're a full manual operator, then there's plenty of options. But if you just wanna pick up and snap and get something usable every time, you're still gonna want a Pixel or an iPhone. Or if you're on a budget, I guess a OnePlus. Interestingly, it does seem to handle highlights very well as seen in our living room shot here, but its processing tends to over brighten the image beyond what looks natural. I mean, these days, what it comes down to is that software processing is far more important than the specs of the camera. And that's an area where Google and Apple still stand out. Though I am rooting for the S10 to be a big leap forward for Samsung's processing. Also, I've got some more bad news. Along with the lack of headphone jack is another missing feature that I've come to expect on high-end smartphones. Stereo speakers. Why have all of this screen for watching YouTube, TV shows, and movies on the go if you're just gonna put a single downward firing speaker without an amplified earpiece speaker. And it's not even a fantastic one. Now with that said, you are getting a bit of a discount. At between 560 to 600 bucks on Gearbest, the Mix 3's main competitor is the OnePlus 6T. And it doesn't give up much in comparison, at least on paper. Specs are very similar. Now the front fingerprint scanner on the 6T is a BFD, and OnePlus's Oxygen OS is, in my humble opinion, miles ahead of MIUI, but that's almost a completely separate video. And anyway, to counter that, Xiaomi not only supports wireless charging, which OnePlus does not, they even throw in the aforementioned charger. So I think for a lot of people, it's gonna come down to style, which is I guess how Samsung and Apple keep managing to charge a lot more for phones that frankly, don't have much on their Chinese competitors at this point. Mm. 
The iFixit ProTech Toolkit is designed to help you tackle almost any electronics repair challenge. It includes over 13 different tools, including their 64 steel screwdriver bit kit, the Jimmy, a steel flexible blade that allows for powerful prying, and a small suction cup for removing glass panels from a phone or tablet. All iFixit tools are backed by a lifetime warranty, so if something breaks, they'll replace it for free. That's how warranties work. And you don't need to be a genius to fix your tools. You just need the right tools. Over at ifixit.com, they've got tons of guides, so pretty much anyone can repair their devices. Go to ifixit.com forward slash Linus and get your ProTech Toolkit today. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, well, you know where that button is. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which is updated, all new, lttstore.com which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. It really is satisfying, isn't it?